been feeling like, I've been feeling like, I've been feeling like I'm ready for the top. Got the pedal to the metal, I've been grinding non stop. Killing every instrumental, and I knew just what I wanted. Now I gotta go and get it, and I'm never looking back. Only looking where I'm headed, and I doubt it for a minute, trying to get another win. Okay, so I'm telling you this to hold myself accountable right now. I need a haircut. I also need a wax. I like to clean up what's over here, a little bit up here and there. Done nothing down there. I don't need no wax down there. Um, so I'm holding myself accountable during the World Series of Poker. You know, you, you, I'm not. I'm less worried about you know how sexy I look and a little more worried about comfort and uh, and whatnot. But we got to get to. We got to get a haircut. This is getting silly. It's too much here. Um, other thing I thought about this morning, you know, and I've been talking about gratitude a lot. And one of the things I'm grateful for. Uh, another thing, which is kind of hard to explain, but I'm grateful for the for the ability to give um, and support other people. So I've been fortunate enough in my life to um, get lucky enough to have abundance that I can help people when I feel like it. And that is a good feeling to do and just to be the ability to do. So, um, you know, I remember, and part of the reason I think that's true is because I remember even from when I was a young age and I started playing poker, my bankroll would be like 900 bucks. And I'd go to like have a Caesar salad at a restaurant before playing poker. And the bill would be like $7 and I'd leave like a 20 because that's, just, I lived from abundance already. Like I didn't live from scarcity. Like I'm going to lose this money and I'm not going to have anything and I need to protect and I need, I can't support other people because what happens if I'm, I didn't live from scarcity. I live from abundance and this is a very deep topic and I'm sure there's a lot of books on the idea, but I think most of us in society, we live from scarcity, whether you are actually in poverty, you live from scarcity of financial need, food, rent, shelter, or even if you are like a very successful businessman, you know, you live from a different form of scarcity. It's like, I don't have enough time. You know, I don't have enough time to do this or to go meet someone or, you know, whatever the case may be. So many of us live from scarcity. And I found for me personally that the fact that I've lived from abundance, even when I didn't really have it, um, feeling like I had enough was a far more uh, effective way to view the world so that I stayed positive and happy and I didn't live in fear. And I don't, and I never have. And like, honestly, I've made decisions in poker throughout my life that were just stupid from a bankroll perspective, but I always did it because I had a deep belief um, like in, a, I never lived in, I just never played in fear. I never, you know, I played in games that were too big. I played with bankrolls that were too short. And I'm, this is a viewer discretion advice. I'm not saying that you should do that. But part of my mindset is why I think for, to some degree I was able to succeed. Now, um, on that note, I want to talk about giving and, and how, like I said, it's a blessing for me. And I want to do some giving. So in the YouTube, in the YouTube comments today, what I want you guys to do is I want you to tell me, um, if you had $10,000 to give to a charity, that really meant something to you. What charity would that be? And you can give me a short description as to why. If it's too long, I might not be able to read it. So I'm not gonna be able to pick all of them, but one of you who chooses a charity that you wanna help out, I'm gonna donate 10,000 to that charity and I'll let you know um, in a couple days which one we choose because it's gonna take me a couple days, I'm sure, to read the comments. So please share with me. Let's do some good in the world. Let's have a positive ripple on our way down to play day two of the Pot Limit Omaha. We are sitting in good position, third in chips, uh, with 532,000, I literally ended, I was going into the last two hours with 20,000, which is insane, it's like nothing. And then I you know, picked up a gift here, a little Christmas gift there, and some punting going on, and I was able to uh, fortunately pick up a stack there. So there's about 100, 100 players left, maybe there'll be some re-entries today, so maybe 110 or so, but really great position, very deep tournament, and honestly, Pot Limit Omaha, I mean, is I don't play that many tournaments of it, because there aren't that many, but. It, the game suits me so well. It really does. It's like it was designed for the old school small ball strategy in so many ways. And uh, it's a post flop game, you know, because you can, pre, your pre flop hands are not that far off in equity, but post flop's where it's at. So it's post flop poker, which I'm all about. So looking forward to a good run today. Uh, good huh? Good win, is it? I don't know if you guys, did you hear the rumor what they said? They're going to cancel the 50K. Next year. They're not doing it anymore. <laughs> they said he just wins it too much. It's just not, not fair. fair to the rest of us. They literally were talking about it. They're going to cancel the thing. Just, mm -hmm. You get the trophy, you take it home. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you should get the Good job, uh, Grinder. <laughs> Didn't expect to see Luke Schwartz on a pigeon stack. I just pulled in. <laughs> oh, you got green. You're okay. <laughs> it looked like you had 20K there. I wouldn't have 20K for long if I had 20K. <laughs> Rip it in. So we just ended the first two levels. And I'm like actually in complete shock. I'm fucking pissed. Holy shit, what a pot. I just played a pot. I'll tell you how the hand went. Guy raises on the button to 12,000. 
I call him the small blind with Ace King 4 4 with the Ace 4 hearts. Big blind calls. It's 36,000 in the pot. Flop is 9 4 3 rainbow, no flush draw. I have three fours. I check, check. Button bets. Pot, 36,000. I make it 100,000 with the three fours. He calls. Turn is a 10, still no flush draw. I bet the pot, 236,000. He thinks for a bit and goes all in. His hand is ace queen, nine four. So we have a set against two pair for, uh, how much is in that pot? Like 800K pot. <laughs> 800K pot. And there's something, I don't know what I felt, a fucking pit in my stomach or something. As the nine rolled off on the river. So we're out, we're actually out. There was the one guy at the table who had more chips than us and we got it in. Where he had two outs for, holy shit, for heaps. Same guy, earlier I was gonna share this hand instead of the other one that I just shared. I can't believe I'm out, what the? F so the other hand was, I had ace, queen, seven, seven, double suited. Came seven, six, three, two spades, one diamond. I have nut diamonds. He check raises flop. I call. Turn is a four of diamonds, so now I have enough flush draw and top set. Um, he bets. I call. River blank. He bets small. I call, and he had the straight. So that was early hand, but that's not the one that I'm. Holy shit! I'm out. Third and chips come in the day. I'm out in two hours. That's the PLO boy. Man, you can't really get it in much better for a pot that size. Two thirty six plus. I had. 300, 300, 600, 800. We're talking about like a almost a million, 850,000 chip pot. What just happened, man? That's not fun. Now I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna cool off now because that was tilting as all F U C K. So I need to chill, chill before the triple draw because I'm just like literally shocked. Okay, so it's 5 p.m. right now. Um, chilling in the trailer, busted, when was it? About an hour ago. And not really sure i'm still steaming i mean it was pretty ugly beat like 900k at that stage was chip lead of course but also i mean it's that's almost like a final table stack right so with like 100 players left so pretty frustrating but um i'm not gonna make the mistake of going into the triple draw right now because i don't feel like i want to be there yet um the limits start at 500 1000 you get 50k in chips that's two hours, so that's already happened. Now they're going to 600, 1200 with 50 can chips for the next two hours. Um, I don't really even have a time frame on like when I want to go. I definitely don't like the idea of regging at the last minute because there is a, you know, just not enough chips to play with. I uh, my buddy Phil Kessel is in town, so he's going to probably play the 2500 World Series. So maybe he'll come hang for a minute before he plays and chit chat and whatnot but uh, a little dejected obviously like you know that was a pretty brutal beat in that spot I mean he said in the poker news thing that he thought I had a pair and a straight draw but I never have that hand so I mean you got to be happy when you can get it in so good like it's rare you can get such a huge pot where you have the guy dead to two outs on the turn and I was able to do that but I mean it's frustrating because it's a call that he probably shouldn't make because the truth is the worst hand in my range there when I check raise the flop beats 9-4. Like it ties 9-4 or it beats it and then when the 10 comes on the turn he just never just never has the... He, he never, I never have the hand that he's hoping I have so pretty frustrating to go out like that but that's why we play the game. Been a little bit of a frustrating series obviously. I got the one third place, a couple bubbles but uh, not um, you know not a lot of caches so far. There's still plenty of time. Triple draw is one of my better games. So we will get in there and we'll give it a, uh, an A effort. I just know that if I go in right now, the best I could do is like a C minus. So we're gonna wait until I feel like we're close to an A. Okay, so it's about 7.30 right now. Been in here since four o'clock. So we killed a uh, solid three and a half hours. My buddy Phil Kessel stopped by. Feeds it across the
Castle. It is. And we got to commiserate over some uh, bad beats. I shared mine from the PLO, and he shared his. He likes PLO. It's probably his favorite game. He's been playing a little cash and going over some hands that he played. And um, So, yeah, commiserating over that. It's always fun to talk to Phil. I don't have, like, I don't really hang out with celebrity friends in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, people ask me, like, who would be the biggest celebrity that's, like, I'm a real friend? And I'd say it's probably Phil Kessel, who's not much of a celebrity. <laughs> he doesn't do cameras. He doesn't do shit like that. Yeah, Haggy uh, obviously has a lot of speed. He's a real smart player. Um, you know, we read well off each other, and, uh, you know, he's a lot of fun to play with. How's your breath? It's, it's not good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant in terms of conditioning. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, obviously, uh, it's a fast game out there, and, you know, you just catch your breath and go back after it. It's been fun watching it. Keep having fun, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Thanks, eh? What a, I can't believe that. So, um, but he's a good dude, and like I said, we commiserated over some bad beats. Uh, he's a good whiner. You know, he, he knows how to... You know, he knows how to, be, you know, do the poker player thing. Like, what are you gonna do, eh? I got, I got, I got you know, a set of kings. You know, it's just funny to listen to him. So uh, I feel like we got enough time here, um, away from the last tournament, to give our best effort in the triple draw. I put some crack juice in here, took a little nap, and we are gonna head in there for level five, I believe, halfway through level five, and look to. Um, put the last one behind us and move forward on to the next one, you know? That's all you can really do at this point. So, uh, off we go. I seen all the signs, I seen all the signs. They have been telling lies, they have been telling lies. Watching how I move, watching how I move. I been keeping track now, watch out for the snakes. Watch out for the snakes, yeah. Watch out for the snakes. Watch out for the snakes, yeah. Watch out for the... Surrounded by sheep, damn, you've been busy watching me move. Paying no mind, staying no line. If you've been wondering, I'm doing fine. Made 150 in a year, I'm only 22, so don't pay me your time. Back with a track, and I've been moving up. I'm a bachelor, but you know I've been getting love, and I'm back. I'm a rap with my life getting tough. I'm a master of craft, and I never give it up. I put in time, I earned a shine, I worked it out, I made it mine, I fell in line. Okay, so we finished two levels, play level five and six. And we've ended with, uh, well, we got like 65K, so successful, you know, starting with 50. Triple draw is a very swingy game. Um, you can lose 65 easy in a few pots, but such is the nature of the game. I enjoy it. Um, having said that, I, I just, you know, the World Series of Poker is an emotional run, right? So you're going to have your ups and your downs. And I would be lying if I said right now I don't feel um, disappointed or a little down on, you know, how things have gone. I mean, I have the third place finish, which was nice. And, of course, I came into the series winning three million in Super High Roller Bowl. And, you know, it's only been, what, 15 events or whatever. But, you know, losing that PLO hand was kind of a, a low for me, a low point of the series. And so, um, you know, I'm at that difficult part of the series right around the middle where it becomes, you know, you, you wears in your mind all the beats and all that kind of stuff. So I will find ways throughout to, you know, hold myself accountable and refresh my mind and, you know, be ready for the stretch run. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just sharing with you that, you know, if you've ever felt lows like that, they're normal and we're emotional beings and, you know, you're only, you're only human. So when something like that happens to you, it's going to affect you and that's okay. It's the, the question is, how do you rebound from that? And I've got 20 years experience on knowing how to do that. And I expect to finish strong. So we have a friendly crew here in the Deuce of Seven Triple Draw. This man right here, Jackie, was wearing a hat. Okay, 
Now, Frank Asella asked to borrow the hat, and Jackie well, says you can keep it. it. Can I have a closer look at this hat, yeah, just for the, for the people? <laughs> look at this thing. It. it is a Burberry, fancy schmancy, all car and, he, and now Jackie just says you can have it because he has a collection so big that, uh, and the surprise, it fits your head, Frank, Thank to be you, honest. <laughs> we have the same size hat. <laughs> That's crazy. No more complaints. I bust you. Okay. No, I'm okay. No more complaints. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Having fun in the Deuce to Seven. <laughs> so, all in all, that was quite a. I guess if you had to use a word, quite a depressing day. Triple draw. I made uh, number four, which is Deuce Four, Five, Six, Seven, against a guy who made a number two. The last hand all in, very, very short. I waited three rounds with my last chips. And I made an eight going to the last draw, lost to a seven, just didn't win any pots. But really the, you know, the, the gut punching, gut wrenching hand, as you guys know, was the million chip PLO pot. I mean, I got those chips that early. I was gonna essentially cruise, right? Not only the money, but that's a stack you could play a final table with. So really just a disappointing day. Tomorrow, let's get that haircut, right? <laughs> let's get that haircut, have a little bit of a maintenance day. Um, refresh and then tomorrow night at 3 p.m. We're gonna play the $2,500 buy-in Omaha 8 stud 8 and we're gonna show up late for that one We're gonna skip probably the first four hours and recharge the batteries um, Maybe even the first six hours. We'll see but that's the end of day 21. I think Dang. I've been keeping track now watch out for the snakes Watch out for the snakes Yeah, watch out for the snakes Watch out for the snakes, yeah, watch out for the Copying what I do every time They 